home prices fell 3.3 percent in the largest 20 U.S. cities in February. That is more bad news for the housing market. I want to get to Bloomberg surveillance, where S&P Case Shiller Index co-founder Carl Case is speaking with Tom Keen and Ken Pruitt. Flat to down, and and all the charts. If, if you look at them, they go up, they come down, and they go up a, a bit during the period of the credit, which was extended in November of of '09, and. Uh, Right. So, uh, so, so so far since the end of the credit in June of last year, it's been kind of discouraging, and not surprisingly so, given all that's happened to the stock and the fact we're not producing anything. And but there's, there's a lot going on, but it's but it's showing up in flat prices. Carl, can you explain? You know, we've talked about market by market here over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, concentrating on like Miami, yeah. Phoenix. Like, what happened all of a sudden with Minneapolis? I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, down what twenty-seven and a half percent in three months. You just look at the numbers, and, and it, it's it's, it's going to take a research paper to figure that out. But I I I test well, to speculate about it. Let but me talk. Let me talk at the radio, Carl, and we'll do it for Betty Lou and everybody at Bloomberg TV. Here is the Case Shiller study in Minneapolis, and you can see back to 2000, they're normal. And then Case Shiller surges and surges up big, Minneapolis less so. But then Minneapolis just craters and is really back to where it was 10 or 11 years ago. That, it's amazing, Carl. It, it is amazing. And I, and, I, and I wish I had an explanation. But I, I've looked at it. You can't explain it with simple economic numbers. There's something else going on up there. But also, the decline of Chicago is quite similar. It, it, it's it's done poorly in the last uh, in the last go round, but it, it's still true that Minneapolis. Let's see what Minneapolis is relative to um, ten years ago. It's it's um, Minneapolis is one on still nine percent above two thousand. So it's. I feel better already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we've, we've talked about this at places where. You know, there was a boom, had the biggest bust, and and in places where uh, refinancing just got totally out of hand, Minneapolis and Chicago were never discussed in in, in light of those two situations. That's right. They 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 had solid performance, but nothing like Washington D.C. or the, the the overbuilt states like Florida, Arizona, Nevada. They were really volatile, and, and so mm-hmm. this this volatility of uh, of the Midwest and the Upper well, Midwest is 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 a bit of a puzzle to me. Carl, you know, well, go ahead, Ken. Well, I, you know. That did not uh, escape our attention here with Washington, D.C., the best performing market with a 2.7 percent increase year over year. As an economist, would you prefer to see a really healthy housing market in a, let's say, productive part of the country where they actually make things? Well, I think I, I, I don't I don't think we need a manufacturing sector as, uh, to to take over the whole economy. I mean, mm. Services are, are produced and and, and serve, you know we've shifted from agriculture to manufacturing, from manufacturing to a service economy. Mm. That doesn't bother me as much as it does most people. Carl, when you look at, um, at the housing policy that we see in the last two years, I think of Carl Case and Ray Fair in your classic textbook. Do we need another policy? From Washington to jumpstart housing, or at oh, least boy. to level it. Well, we've 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 certainly used policy to, to 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 in a way help create this boom and bust cycle, lead to the volatility and the upside, and vol and and stickiness on the downside. If you look at, at a potential buyer, we've got we've got a lot of potential buyers out there, um, and and if you think of buying a house. With all the, you know, you take the yield on a house. It's the services you get by living in it. And so the, the yield is, it comes to you in real terms. It's not taxable. Um, we also have all this, you know, keeping interest rates down and um, the, 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 the just incredible mm-hmm. Numbers of, of implicit subsidies throughout that have, that have kept. Okay, we are listening right now to S&P Case Shiller's Carl Case but talking about the housing market and uh, the recovery or possible coming recovery that was on Bloomberg surveillance.